why do we get stuck in this feeling of being right? One reason actually has to do with the feeling of being wrong. So let me ask you guys something. Or actually, let me ask you guys something, because you're right here. How does it feel emotionally? How does it feel to be wrong? Dreadful. Thumbs down. Embarrassing. embarrassing. Okay, wonderful, great. Dreadful, thumbs down, embarrassing. Thank you. These are great answers. But they're answers to a different question. You guys are answering the question how does it feel to realize you're wrong? <laughs> Realizing you're wrong can feel like all of that and a lot of other things, right? I mean, it can be devastating, it can be revelatory, it can actually be quite funny, like my stupid Chinese character mistake. But just being wrong doesn't feel like anything. I'll give you an analogy. You remember that Looney Tunes cartoon where there's this kind of pathetic coyote who's always chasing and never catching a roadrunner? In pretty much every episode of this cartoon, there's a moment where the coyote is chasing the roadrunner and the roadrunner runs off a cliff, which is fine, he's a bird, he can fly. But the thing is, the coyote runs off the cliff right after him. And what's funny, at least if you're you know, six years old, is that the coyote is totally fine too, he just keeps running. Right up into the moment that he looks down, and realizes that he's in midair. That's when he falls. When we're wrong about something, not when we realize it, but before that, we're like that coyote after he's gone off the cliff and before he looks down. You know, we're already wrong. We're already in trouble. But we feel like we're on solid ground. So I should actually correct something I said a moment ago. It does feel like something to be wrong. It feels like being right. <laughs> so this is one reason, a structural reason, why we get stuck inside this feeling of rightness. I call this error blindness. You know, most of the time, we don't have any kind of internal cue to let us know that we're wrong about something until it's too late. But there's a second reason that we get stuck inside this feeling as well, and this one is cultural. Think back for a moment to elementary school. You're sitting there in class, and your teacher is handing back quiz papers. And one of them looks like this. This is not mine, by the way. <laughs> so there you are in grade school, and you know exactly what to think about the kid who got this paper. That's the dumb kid, the troublemaker, the one who never does his homework. So by the time you are nine years old, you've already learned, first of all, that people who get stuff wrong are lazy, irresponsible dimwits. And second of all, that the way to succeed in life is to never make any mistakes. We learn these really bad lessons really well. And a lot of us, and I suspect especially a lot of us in this room, deal with them by just becoming perfect little A students, perfectionists, overachievers. Okay, so, so fine, right? Except that then we freak out at the possibility that we've gotten something wrong. Because according to this, getting something wrong means there's something wrong with us. So we just insist that we're right because it makes us feel smart and responsible and virtuous and safe. But it's also a huge social problem. Think for a moment about what it means to feel right. It means that you think that your beliefs just perfectly reflect reality. And when you feel that way, you've got a problem to solve which is, how are you going to explain all of those people who disagree with you? It turns out most of us explain those people the same way, by resorting to a series of unfortunate assumptions. The first thing we usually do when someone disagrees with us is we just assume they're ignorant. You know, they don't, they don't have access to the same information that we do, and when we generously share that information with them, they're going to see the light and come on over to our team. When that doesn't work, when it turns out those people have all the same facts that we do and they still disagree with us, then we move on to a second assumption. 
which is that they're idiots. <laughs> they have all the right pieces of the puzzle, and they are too moronic to put them together correctly. <laughs> and when that doesn't work, when it turns out that people who disagree with us have all the same facts we do, and are actually pretty smart, then we move on to a third assumption. <laughs> they know the truth, and they are deliberately distorting it for their own malevolent purposes. So this is a catastrophe. This attachment to our own rightness keeps us from preventing mistakes when we absolutely need to, and causes us to treat each other terribly.